That's the intro. I can see myself. Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome back to another kart racing video. Sponsored or powered by Quadrant, of course. We are here for UKC round number three in Lark Hall. Last time out, round number two, I was mainly finding myself going into cones, but also learning a lot from fellow driver Tom Fleming. We're going to try and learn a thing or two more and see if we have progressed in the world of X30 here at Lark Hall. Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome to another karting video. You join me at Lark Hall. I'm in Scotland. I've made a seven and a half hour journey to get here for this one, round number three, UKC. You join me on Saturday morning. Yesterday was Friday, that's how days work, which was a test day. And here's how testing went. Except it didn't go because I lost the camera. It's out here, it's out there somewhere, either here or someone's nicked it and it's on eBay. But early this week, I did go to PF International and I had a good old test day there and maybe have a quick look at that. So yes, I headed up to PF International. What an amazing track this is. I'll hopefully try and make another video on this at some point. But really this whole day was about one thing. I was trying to improve one key area as I will now explain. Now I've been speaking to a fair few people. Kai Hunter, Tom Fleming, Rory Hudson, Ryan Norberg, an American racer. And they all come to the conclusion that I am crap at braking. And therefore that's what we are trying to work on. Um, so if my braking is still bad here, then I apologize to all those people for wasting their time. So here we have an almighty sausage. Just check that out. It's a big boy. Um, I actually had an accident here yesterday with someone and I can't really show you it because, well, the camera's gone, isn't it? So that's a bit annoying. If suddenly you see a GoPro Hero 8 with a 128 gigabyte SD card up for sale, then please do let me know and then buy it for me. That'll be very useful. This is where it's gonna choke up in the race for sure. So I'm expecting carnage here. Now it's kind of annoying that I lost my camera because you won't believe me, but yesterday I set the world record around this track and I, I shaved about eight seconds off the world record. And um, just after that, I overtook 14 carts on one corner and then an asteroid hit and it's all on the footage, but I lost the camera. I know you won't believe me, but it happened, all right? So last time, yeah, we had, we had data and we have live footage on the GoPro cameras from other DHR drivers, Tom Fleming, main, main example. Um, this week, that is not the case. They, you know, Tom's not here. I don't have any other X30 drivers at DHR. So I might have to go in, sneak in someone else's tent, uh, maybe Caden over at Croc Promotion and uh, go and just sneak on his computer and have a look at his footage. Big chunky curb on the inside don't want to touch that otherwise you're getting flipped into that forest at the back get on that curb you can see a fair few people have gone a little bit too wide and done a bit of rally cross but that's not the sport we're doing today we're doing karting this is probably the slowest corner on the calendar this is the monaco hairpin and you go approximately four miles an hour through here really really slow and you lose even more uh, time if you overtake someone through here you go about two miles an hour if you overtake someone so um those kids going through there very smoothly, probably about five miles an hour, probably quicker than the car actually. Coming up in the next corner, we've gone from the Monaco hairpin to Indy 500. Check out the banking on this bad boy. So most people will go around there, but what fools they are, because this is quicker. Curbs, again, you don't want to touch those. I'm going to touch it now though. No. In before we don't go single file and then everyone crashes through here. That's the lap, that's Lark Hall. Pretty cool track. Hopefully we can have a good day, good weekend, and get some good results. Now I need to go put my GoPro on, we'll put it on securely, and make sure it doesn't fall off. <laughs> 10 hours later. <laughs> Cameraman Jamie, doing the, doing the proper hard work here. It is hard though, isn't it? It doesn't, doesn't come off at all. <laughs> okay, so we have attached the GoPro. This one hopefully will not be falling off. And, well, if it does fall off, then we don't have a video. So that won't be good, will it? <laughs> a 
Okay, let's jump out onto the track for Saturday practice. So we've had Friday practice. And as I've said, the camera was lost. It's in the Shadow Realm somewhere. So all of that footage was lost. So we're going to have to make do with this. Now, take a quick look at the car up in front because they are about to do a bit of rally cross here on cold tyres straight off doing a massive jump. That jump, you're not really meant to take it, but it's there just in case you want some over style points or something. Okay, you've got this very long right hander which leads onto this back straight, the longest straight on the track. It's actually a very long straight, which isn't actually dead straight, but you get the idea. Then you've got this fast sweeping right hander. Now, this track is rather characterised by some fast sweepers, but also some very slow corners, such as this, the hairpin. And I'm pretty sure it's the slowest corner on the calendar, if not in global karting. Now, we come out here, this is a fast sweeping right-hander chicane kind of thing. It's actually very nice, quite a nice little corner, that. And that rounds out a lap of Lark Hall. Let's have a look at turn one though. This is a difficult corner because the entry is kind of weird and you have to run out onto the curb on the exit. Now you can see here, my camera decided it didn't really want to be a proper camera. It, it decided it would rather just film the sky. So progressively through this session, as you can see, it was uh, moving very slowly but surely up towards the sky, which doesn't really help. And uh, obviously I need to get good at content creation and make sure my camera is actually doing its job. Um, here's Caden McQueen just behind me here. One of the very fastest guys in X30. And he's going to just sell me the chips at the inside. So that's the end of that session. Time to review and see how we went. Oh, fuck's sake, look. <laughs> Aggressive braking. Yeah, so first session, went out of the front, got overtaken by McQueen, who was flying, probably the quickest person in. Uh, just got to work on the hairpins. Uh, just a bit too casual going in on the brakes, so that's what we're going to work on on this next one. You were lucky there, because that's a... Well, I couldn't back out of it's it. It's a good so. move, though. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, had to go. I couldn't back out of it then. You, I kind of had to committed, go. committed, oh, committed fully. We have safely secured the GoPro. It is on properly with the screwdriver. It is attached with cable tyres, so that is it. Should be fine now. Should. Should. Okay, let's go out onto the track for one more practice. Now, with these practice sessions, I think the main objective really is to kind of work out what you're doing wrong and therefore what you can improve. Uh, so Liam, my, my engineer, he was saying that one of the big things I was uh, getting wrong was the, the hairpins on the brakes. So Caden on his lap that he went past me, he probably took about half a second out of me on the brakes going into the two hairpins. I'm just, just there. So we've sort of, we've pinned down an area that I'm weak. And this is something that many X30 drivers have pointed out to me. That it's a lot of the time it's on the brakes, um, as I said earlier in the video. And it's a technique that is quite tr tricky to get dead right. You, you press the brake hard and then the cart wants to get away from you. Especially here, look at this. You go through a kink, over a bump, and the cart kind of wants to get away from you into this very, very tight corner. So very tricky to get that one dead right. It's something we're trying to improve and work upon. And we did slowly uh, edge down our time. At this point, our, our time's sort of about 50.3. And I did about 50.2 on uh, fresh tyres on the Friday. So we're getting back towards our best, uh, or our PB time. So we're not too far away from that. Um, so that's a positive sign. A negative sign is the fact that I didn't do my camera up properly once again, and you see, it would rather face 
the sky than it would the track. So, so that's kind of just rubbish footage, really. There, there's the sun, in fact. That's not very useful for a karting video. Right, GoPro's gone. Not only that, we did have one issue with the fuel tank slightly loose. A bit of a distraction, but we tried to get that fixed for the, for the races. Let's go. Fabulous. There's just been an announcement that there's been a found GoPro, so let's go and have a look. Yes! <laughs> there you go, the GoPro. Is this version? It's not my one. It's not my camera. It's something else. Oh. Okay, another Fanatec giveaway. Thank you again for sponsoring the season, of course. We have another item to give away. Um, let, me, let me just pick it up, it's right here. It's there, there it is. One of those. I love those. Do you love those? Hopefully you do, because you can win one. All you gotta do, head over to my Twitter, which is linked, and like this post, and then follow me, of course, if you're not already following me. Um, yeah, that's all linked, so good luck. Try and win this amazing item. I, you know, I can only tell you how good these things are. They're just absolutely incredible. Me and these things go way back, um, so good luck. All right, that's the end of practice. Now we've got to race and do the real thing. Um, practice was okay, actually. I got down to like a 50.3 in that last session, not too far off my PB, and we were on old tires there. There's only 12 of us, or 13 of us, so we're going to go and get some top 12s or top 13s and hopefully some top 10s and hopefully some top 1s, but that's not going to happen. Right, let's jump into it. Race number one, let's go. Okay, race. One, heat number one, you see there the red stripe on the tyre, brand new tyres for the races. Let's go. My car didn't want to actually start on the grid, but luckily it did get going eventually. And we could take up our proper grid slot of four. Now quite a tricky one because I've, you know, I've not raced it before. This is my first time racing here, so we're going to find out exactly how carnage filled it is. A bit of a slow start ahead. I'm going to try and tuck it to the inside, the left side, and that's probably the safer place to be and we've lost one position there probably not too bad when you start fourth on the outside on this kind of track then maybe one position is actually not too bad a thing let's try and keep up with these guys as, as long as possible 11 laps this race down the back straight you see i've already lost a little bit of time as we come into the fast sweep up at the end of the straight I'm not getting overtaken just yet still in fifth into the hairpin late on the brakes so we're going to cook it in there nicely and Keep our position. Alex Moody up ahead, going for the move on Otto up the inside. Goes a little bit wide on the exit. We could try and go up the inside here, but we make contact with each other and lose a couple of positions. A bit of a mistake there, I would say. I think I just ran a little bit too wide. We've made contact on the entry, and as a result, I'm down into eighth position. Let's have a look at that again. So, yeah, it's just one of those silly little moments, really. I think. I was just asking maybe a little bit too much space, which wasn't quite there. We find ourselves in eighth place here, up behind uh, James Otto. Let's try and get back past him, if possible. Try and do it properly this time. Goes a little bit deep into this uh, left-right complex. Onto the back straight. Let's look over his shoulder. And as we head down here, not going to be close enough for this move. It's quite a tricky circuit to actually overtake around. There are overtaking opportunities, but you're pretty much right on the edge on the brakes as it is when you're not overtaking someone so to go past someone as well quite tricky because the corner's being very very tight it's quite a narrow circuit i would say therefore the driver can realistically hold their position even if they're a little bit slower and that's exactly what i'm doing right now because we have uh, angus moorsdale just behind it actually throws up the inside there leave a little bit of space for him and i run slightly wide but just keep the position so he's trying to get past can't quite see that of course because we're facing forward obviously uh, through here uh, you can see James just beginning to edge away slightly as I'm under pressure from behind so quite a tricky uh, tricky position to be in where you're trying to attack but also defend at the same time went into hairpin number two a little bit wider I, I just noticed he was trying to take a couple of nibbles and that time he got it fully done so number 23 going through as Angus moves down try and keep up with him as he'll Presumably get back onto the back of 
uh, James up in front. Potentially follow him through if we can do. Let's try and do that. So he catches up a few laps later. He goes up the inside into the final corner. Probably the safest and best overtaking opportunity on this lap into that final corner. And as a result, they have lost a lot of time. You see, if you get overtaken or if you overtake, you do lose a bit of time. So I've, I've pretty much got right onto the back of James once again here. So we do have a chance here of trying to get up into eighth. Which is slightly better. As you can see here, though, you see my uh, the foam mount which goes around the camera to protect it from wind noise is beginning to creep its way across the screen. So we seem to have some sort of camera problem in every session. Now, this is rather annoying, but in the third of the screen that you can see on the left, we are about to see what matters. Um, so just keep your eyes peeled on that left side of the screen just for this moment here. As we come into the final corner, we do go up the inside here. And thankfully, <laughs> despite the 20% of the screen you can actually see, we actually managed to capture it fully. Uh, by this point, uh, yeah, you're just looking at some foam, basically, which isn't particularly interesting. But we did actually manage to finish the race in eighth position with, yeah, foam completely covering the screen. Very annoying. You stand on the scout. Yeah. We're just getting a uh, car screw in here. Have to check the carburetor and make sure we're not running illegal stuff, which we're not. We're good boys here at Dan Holland Racing. Thank you very much. It was at eight initially, so had a bit of an incident, and the camera was covered by the foam. It's like we keep having bloody camera problems. So. But yeah, I finished eighth, and that's about as good as I, I beat the people I should have beat, I think. Okay, one of the big problems I have is that I am too fat, as you can see. Um, so if you look at this, it says I am 84 and a half kilos, which is about eight kilos too heavy. So if anyone has any solutions to losing eight kilos in the next hour, then please do let me know. We've got one more session today to have no camera problems. One last race today. Let's make sure the camera's on. It doesn't fall off. The screw is tight so it doesn't fall back. The foam cover doesn't block the camera. Yeah. Let's have a good And one. win the race. And win the race, obviously. Okay, here we go. Heat number two fist bump there from cameraman Jamie this is our back start on the grid starting 10th on the outside let's go and immediately to turn one we have our first shadow realm entry of the day that's Cameron going sent spinning into the undergrowth so we're going to gain the position there okay let's try and keep up with these guys as long as possible now the unfortunate thing about this round as you can see there's only 11 of us on the grid now, quite a low number Quite frustrating that it was that, that low. You know, I'd rather be at least double that. It'd be nice if the entrance and mount was in the 20s. Yeah, quite a low count of drivers this time, but we are still measuring ourselves against some of the very fastest guys in the next 30. The likes of Ollie Greenall, Hayden McQueen, the guys at the front. They are very, very, very quick in the next 30. Now, coming through the final corner here, kind of kicks off up in front. We are going to make the most of the mayhem and try to slide up the inside into ninth place and once again just try and keep up with this group as long as possible now the weird thing about this round was that in many ways it's a strange way to say it but it's like it was like formula one where the fastest car would finish first and the second car second fastest car would finish second now my pace this weekend indicated that i was the eighth quickest out of the 11 here uh, in race one i finished eight we're going to try and at least finish eight that's basically our minimum aim want to finish at least where you should finish and then try to chip away a few more if possible but at the very worst i want to finish in eighth place i know it doesn't sound like much but when you are up against some of the very quickest guys next 30 then i think you do have to be reasonable at times so coming into this uh the final chicane into the final corner so uh, angus moore's there in front now he was probably the seventh quickest driver this weekend and he turned up on the Friday and he was a little bit off the pace, but he did actually gain speed rather quickly. 
Uh, from what I've been told, he's a European level driver. He does, he's done like European competition. He was fairly slow on the Friday, but then, he, yeah, as I say, he gained pace very quickly. And he was definitely quicker than I was. But he was always there, just in front. And he was always the aim. If I could just chip away a few tenths, then I might be able to get that seventh place from him, which is eighth at the moment. And we've got to try and overtake one guy who is supposed to be slower than me. And uh, we'll try and reclaim that eighth place. There's number 51 there. He was on pole position, gets edged wide on the exit. And uh, very, very savage is X30. He gets done up the inside here. And I try to throw out the inside and follow him through, which was a bit of a late move, to be honest. That was never really going to happen. So we're going to have to wait a little bit longer to try to get past him. Uh, but we're going to try to do that as soon as we possibly can to try to not lose touch with the group up in front. Into the left, into the very, into the very long right. Difficult corner that one to get right. Onto the back straight. And he takes a look over his shoulder. We're not quite close enough to go for this move here. Try and get as close as we can though. Close up on the brakes. He takes the curb, which you don't really want to do. And on the brakes, we've got the inside into the hairpin. Overcook it slightly, but he could almost have to because of how late I went in there. We are going to gain that position up into eight. And then this is lap 11. You can see the group not too far away, but it is still a couple of seconds. And it's kind of agonizingly far away because they are having a good fight and I'd just love to be part of it. But annoyingly, once again, my pace was eighth best and we are going to finish eighth best here as we finish heat number two. I'm exhausted. I've only done two races today. I beat everyone I should have beat, basically. So, it's gone to plan in that sense. You join me at the end of day one, end of Saturday, on hairpin number one on the apex. Uh, this is the source of all of my problems. I'm going to go to the hotel now, drink far too much, and then come back tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hello, guys. Day two, how are we doing? How are we doing? Back with another Steve's notebook, Steve's track walk, whatever you want to call it. Having a look at where I've been going wrong, which is all of it. I knew it would be difficult jumping into this X30. It's a very, very difficult category. A lot of the top guys have been doing it for many years. And something about this weekend, right? A lot of the top guys have been here for the last three weeks. Last week was the British Kart Championships here. The week before that was LGM here. So they're here, you know, for the last three weeks, hammering the same track over and over. It's taken me a couple of months just to gain like two tenths. It really does take time to, to get good. Getting better at this corner, but it is not easy. It certainly is not easy. I haven't launched this curb yet, or that one. And I haven't ended up in that digger, which is uh, always great. Uh, but there is still today to do that. And that would be a great thumbnail and title. Hopefully it does happen, actually. What I do need to do is speak to a lot of the faster guys just to get information on how to get those final few tenths. But a lot of it is just the attacking of the corners, going in hard. And, you know, they say slow in, fast out. That is not true in X30. It is fast in, fast out. There's sort of two classes here. Like You've got the top six who are like the pinnacle of X30, if you like, in many ways. Um, and to try to keep up with them is a tall order. Therefore, I'm going to try and win GP2. If they're Formula 1, I'm GP2. There is one guy, uh, I think it's a local guy, Moolsdale. He was just a couple of tenths faster than me yesterday. Um, but I think if we can just chip away a few tenths, he is the target. Here's one way to overtake the fastest drivers, okay? Off. We're going, mate. Yeah, we're going. I'm telling you this way. Here's some. I'm going to overtake Caden McQueen. Here we go. I'm telling you. Let's go. He's quite fast. Come on, Caden. Before you quick. And there we have it. That's how you beat Caden. There, look. He's so... I thought he was quick. I thought, I thought he was quick and then just did him. <laughs> Sold him for chips right there. You've got to be realistic in motorsport. We're just going to try and do all we can do. I think yesterday I finished where I should have done. No one beat me who should have, have beaten me. Um, but now it's, a, now it's a case of trying to get a bit close and trying to beat people who shouldn't be beaten by me. 
if you get what I mean. Maybe you don't. Right, let's get into heat number three. Let's go. I'm going to win this one on the first corner. I'm going to overtake everyone and I'll be checked out by turn two. Those are some rather ambitious aims there, Mr. Steve. Let's see if it can happen. This is heat number three. Let's see what we can do. Starting fifth this time around. Now, throughout this video, uh, sorry, throughout this race, we are going to jump on board with Mr. Caden McQueen, number three. Let's see what we can do here up the inside. We we'll start on the inside. So we gain a position there from McQueen. One of the only terms are going to overtake him, apart from when I ran past him in the track wall. And then late on the brakes into turn one. I'm always okay on, on lap one. When the, when the grip is low, I'm not too bad. Here's Caden. He's just behind me. I actually just overtook him. But he's about to return the favour here and dive up the inside into the fast sweeper. So there we go. Didn't last long <laughs> that I was uh, in front of him. Let's see what he can do now as uh, he pushes on to try to get this race win. And you see just how much acceleration he has out of the slow corners. Now, part of that will be because of weight. I am a bit overweight, which does affect you in slow corners. But part of it is because he is just driving the car better. Uh, probably that is the majority of it, if we're being completely honest. Now, over the line to end lap number one. Okay, we've, we've started the lap in fifth. We, we ended it in fifth. Okay, it could be worse, but we are already begin, uh, beginning to be dropped here by the elite bunch of X30 drivers just in front. Which, we're going to do our best, though to prolong uh, being overtaken into this race. Let's see what happens here into the, the far sweeper. And, well, not the tidiest of uh, entries, I must say. On the brakes, into the hairpin. Anyone going to top up the inside? No. We're going to look at Caden. He's going to go up the inside of Luke Watson. Is, is he? Yes, he is. He, nicely on the brakes. You see just how tidy his steering is. Everything's very, very smooth. He just makes it look easy. And then there's me jumping all over the curb and getting overtaken. Yes, there's Moorsdale just going through. So it's just one of those things where I'm, I'm sure in the comments as Green all goes through. Another very, very fast guy. Now, I'm sure in the comments everyone will be like, well, what, why don't you just drive more smoothly? Why don't you just press the brakes better? Why don't you just go faster? Well, I would. If it was that easy, I'd do it. But it does take time. Lap three here. Is he going to go for this move? Yes, he is. He's quite a way back, but you see, he's so confident on the brakes and so smooth, even though he was overtaken. And he's found himself in the lead of the race. So three laps ago, I was ahead of Caden. Now I'm eighth and he's first. That just shows you the difference. He's showing me how it's done right now. He's showing me how it's done. He's showing you all how it's done, really, to be honest. Uh, so on the exit here, Moorsdale just in front. This is lap four. It's not too far away. And he's looking over his shoulder. Gap isn't too big, but it was here by lap eight. You see, uh, um, that's basically what a couple of attempts looks like after a couple of laps. It just opens up, and uh, because the cars are so fast, um, half a second is a bigger space than it would be in a slower car. Here's Caden in the lead. Just it's, it's, it's almost like looking at 110 AI on F1, where they just drive perfectly, and that's basically what Caden is. Look, just every corner. Every input is absolutely perfect. Nothing more or nothing less than what he needs to be. So that's a textbook level uh, example of driving there from Caden. And he actually ends up winning this race by more than a second. And um, that's good, considering he didn't start in first. He started in, in fourth and went down to fifth. At the end of the race, there he goes. He wins it quite comfortably and uh, brings home a nice tidy win. Meanwhile, a little bit further back, I finish in my customary 8th place. I think 6th place isn't the thing anymore. Maybe it's 8th place. And uh, there we go. Finishing where we probably ought to have finished. Really loose through that race. Couldn't really drive with it, to be honest. At one point I thought, I've got to come in, because it, was, it felt like it was coming off. It feels all right here. You're trying to hold the throttle halfway through a corner, and then the pedal's moving. <laughs> So yeah. it's really difficult. Moving side to side or moving? It's just like, it was at an angle, moving yeah. outwards. Okay, so coming up is the pre-final. I am starting eighth, which is on the outside. So I'm about to get shafted, love it. Mr. Caden McQueen is on pole position. There he is, he's right in there. 
and uh, we'll have a good chat with him in just a moment because he is a very important character in today's or in this weekend's karting. Are you winning? No, okay, I'm less than that one. Got anything cool to say? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> next time, next time maybe. Okay, I'll see you later. Catch you later, mate. Have a good one, bro. <laughs> that was my best, my number one fan, Jacob. And uh, he gives me motivational speeches before every race and a fist bump which is worth an estimated half a second a lap. Okay, we're heading over to crop promotion. Four of my rivals are in this awning. So there's lots of valuable data to be found with Caden McQueen. He's on pole position for the pre-final. Expert is hard. Expert is hard. I think I've only been doing it for what, two months? What can a, a beginner like me do to get towards the front of the pack? Uh, it's mainly about seat time really like you know the more more time you're in a seat is when you're learning um, you know the fitness side of things is very important as well because it's so so hard on your body um, but it's just about being in the seat and practicing as much as you can yeah I think I've, I've noticed this week I've I have edged a little bit closer in terms of time to you guys but still a little bit too far away um, what I was gonna ask is if you wouldn't mind uploading all of your data and all of your video onto this hard drive yeah, and then videos if you want. <laughs> we might have to do that I might have to do that yeah, you can have it if you want you can have the videos okay there we go we got some video footage <laughs> that's why I'm here really because I've got no teammates so I need to steal all of your data because I haven't got any of my own yeah do that that's perfect <laughs> here's me racing I'm really quick I didn't know you got a red suit Steve yeah just change it Okay, here's a direct comparison between myself and Caden, starting the lap at the same time. Now, the main thing you're going to notice, I would say, is the minimal input on Caden's wheel. He really does not turn any more or less than he needs to to get the car around the corner. And on the exit of the first sector, he's already a third of a second up. Now, one of the main things in X30, I would, I would say, let's say you turn in a little bit too early, then you have to turn back out and then turn back in again. That really unsettles the car big time. So there's lots of very subtle things you can do to make the car really dislike you. And uh, we're another three tenths down. And these are the things I'm doing. Just maybe turning a little bit too much, then you have to turn back out, then turn back in. And it just really unsettles the car. So a small problem or a small mistake on the way into a corner can actually magnify into a big time loss. And it's clear to me that Caden's really mastered the amount of input you need to put in to really ma uh, maximize your performance. This is what seven tenths of a second looks like. He'd, he's gained that over one lap. Um, but you know, the small differences add up to the big time. Also, while I'm here, these three are my main rivals. Well, two of them and number 51, who's somewhere over there. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna like destroy their carts. <laughs> Go. Cheers, guys. Seems alright. All good. Hopefully. You are losing ten seconds to the car in front. Ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go, pre-final time. Caden on pole position. I'm in eighth, no surprise, because I've finished there in pretty much every race so far. Let's see what we can do. If we can uh, maybe even finish seventh, that might be an achievement. Okay, let's go. Around the outside, we're looking around the outside anyway. And thank you, tuck in here into single file. It does tuck into single file quite quickly, but here, look at this. Probably the best thing I've done all weekend. Nice little move around the outside, Molesdale. And we find ourselves in seventh. Now it's just, case of defending like a maniac for 13 and a half laps I've tried to finish in seven as if we can do that now these are the these are my favorite moments of the race I think the start where it's all kicking off and I'm actually in a race because one thing I would say is different now compared to before um, I, I did used to race uh, mini max and junior max but this was about 15 years ago the grip was a lot less back then um, with the grippier tires uh, these days it, it it really is a different animal to try to drive these carts 
Now, Angus throws himself up the inside there. Gets himself backed up the inside. And to be fair, looking at the footage and looking at my uh, onboards, I was probably taking that corner a little bit too wide all weekend. And I probably could have been a lot tighter for the apex. Um, so it made me a bit of a target going into that corner. A little bit late there going in. Um, so this is the weird dynamic of this weekend, as I mentioned earlier, where everyone kind of settled into the position that they probably ought to be in. So you can see that I'm in eighth and I was the eighth quickest all weekend. Moolesdale in seventh and he was the seventh quickest all weekend. And there wasn't much you could do beyond that. I suppose all I could do here is to almost turn into a practice session, just really try to, to learn new things and just try to be a bit more experimental on the brakes and just try to push a little bit more. It's not as easy as it looks, I must really say that. Um, it sounds easy just to press the brake a bit harder. When you press it a bit harder though, the car gets more unsettled, um, then your steering might go off and then you have to brake a little bit later to compensate. Oh my goodness, I'm 61 there. Uh, Johnston going all over the grass. We saw that earlier, so I'm going over that jump. So bonus points for him. Um, this is lap number four. You see the, the guys there in front just beginning to edge away though. A couple of attempts, that's all that, that's all that is. It would be really nice if there was, rather than 11 people, 33 people and therefore you know a bit more of a fight through the pack but when there's only 11 of you it's uh, you know the fighting comes at a bit of a premium it must be said uh, so through the final sequence here into the final corner just trying to practice uh, pressing that brake a little bit harder into that final corner holding the brake into the apex as you have to do an x30 you have to really hold that uh, brake into the apex of the corner something that I've really had to learn this year because it's nothing I've really had to ever do in karting. I've never really had to hold the, the brake into the corner. You hold it in a straight line then release but the next 30 is a little bit different. At the end of the race though we're going to finish in 8th place at the end of lap 14 pretty much where we should have finished and <laughs> once again another 8th. The 6th meme is dead. It's all about 8th place now. Um, but yeah it was a very hot weekend this. Surprising for Scotland. It was only about officially 23 but it felt more like 30 i must i must say that um but yeah that's the end of the pre-final just one more race left to go Pinfire, anywhere you think you're, are you still doing that? out of is it in you or? um out of the hairpins yeah but um out of the long right onto the back straight what's going on everyone it's your boy super gt it's your boy what's going on everyone Okay, time for the final. Surprise, surprise, right? I'm starting in eighth. Yeah, how about that? Finished eighth, therefore I started. Let's try and keep up with these guys a little bit longer if possible. We're gonna go around the outside here and it doesn't quite work out for us, unfortunately. So we, we stick into eighth place. Don't manage to make up a position like I did in the previous one. So around the long looping right onto the back straight. Now, this is where, yeah, I, I want to explain this because I felt like a little bit frustrated and it's, I felt the kind of same thing in the previous round at Raura where there is just a bit of a golf in class um, because everyone I've spoken to says, well, pretty much everyone's always like, oh yeah, when I was out in Europe last week, when I was out at this track this week, we're not, you know, they're out all the time in these parts. And in a, in a, in a weird way, when... Um, I, I thought about doing karting this year. I typically felt that karting was a sport that you can just jump into and just, if you're quick, you'll just be quick straight away. But in many ways, it felt a bit like stim racing in the sense that th for those who can get out on the track all the time and just hammer in laps, lap after lap after lap and get loads of seat time, those guys will be the quickest. And I mean, it sounds obvious really, but oh, actually we've got a bit of a retirement there. So maybe we're not going to finish in eight. We're going to finish in seventh, hopefully. If we can go one better, that'd be great. Get the sixth place, which we've been so long craving for. Um, but yeah, seat time matters so much in these carts. You really do just have to hammer in lap after lap. That's why I did the, uh, the PF International Test Day. Yes, it's not the same track, but it is a track. And once you can learn the cart, that's what really matters. You just need to learn the cart and then you can kind of translate that into most tracks. 
Um, but I would say that compared to two months ago, compared to the first round at uh, Wilton Mill, I've definitely got quicker. I've definitely got quicker. I've got close to the front guys. I know that they are still quicker, obviously. But it does take a lot of time to really, you know, home in on just a tenth or two tenths. I would say I'm a little bit quicker. If I did that first Wilton Mill round now, I would certainly finish a lot higher up than what I did two months ago. So the progress is coming. The progress is coming. It is not easy. And I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I, I didn't know quite how hard it would be. So I would say a massive shout out, a massive you know, fair play to these guys who are quick. It is not easy because I think karting does often get looked down upon. I think people sort of just think it's easy and then anyone can do it. But I must say it really just is not the case. It's very, very difficult to really just get those last couple of attempts to really extract the maximum out of a car it is a skill and it's a skill i'm still honing 20 years after starting karting you know i started in august 2001 so i've still got a lot to learn i've still got a long way to go um this is the end of the race um as you can see there's not really anyone close in front the gaps did open up as they typically would this is a longer race though 18 laps this time around well, we come to the end of the weekend. Ollie Greenall actually managed to snatch the win away from Caden. Uh, so Caden, still very fast, of course, but just finishing second on this occasion. And then a little bit later there, I come to finish the race and the weekend in seventh in, in the final. So we went one better. There we go. Another weekend up. Must lose weight. So we've got a bit of Ted's notebook now. And my name's not Ted, but... We're gonna roll with it. Hello Steve, my scooter is now dead. How's it going? Have you got something cool to say for the video? Um, well, hello my friend Finn and subscribe to Super GT. Subscribe to Super GT, this kid knows his stuff. Fantastic. Oh yes, I would like to make a clarification in the previous video. I said that your dog was a Labrador. A Labrador, it was a golden retriever, so I'm so sorry. Yes, you should I'm, I'm very, for very sorry for that. Talk to Caden, finish second. I think I gave Caden bad luck. Green all came along, nabbed away the win. He done, he, he done a good job. Um, you know, we tried something different for the final as well, which didn't, didn't really work, but we learned. And uh, he was fast enough, so yeah, he found pace. I dropped off a little bit, but no, he done well. Very valiant in defeat, very valiant. He'll come back, I'm sure, in the next round. Cheers for all the footage as well. We will, uh, I'll watch it a million times to hopefully get on his level. <laughs> uh, you'll get there. There we have it, guys. The end of round number three at Larkle. A very hot one. Very, very hot one. Should be illegal for it to be this hot in Scotland. My basic summary of the racing, all the people that were faster than me, I was slower than. And I was faster than all the people that were slower than me. And that's pretty much how it, how it transcended in every race. I was 7th or 8th, where I should have been, based on my pace. I just want to say a massive thank you to anyone who came down to the track and you know, said hello. And especially Nicole, who came down and gave us a couple of gifts. That was very, very generous. Um, and also, of course, just to you for watching and supporting this series. So big shout out to Quadrant for sponsoring. Fanatec as well, there's a giveaway. Don't forget. But... Um, let that corporate cart go past. But yeah, that's the end of this one. Catch us in a month in Wales. GYG is the next one. Take care. I'll see you there. Goodbye.